Okay, now I'll take my vise that I had on my drill press and I'll put that on my rotary table here. <clears throat> I'll get that set up. And what I'll do is I'll put one of these here uh, work pieces in the uh, in the vise and then I'll use a center finder to line up my vise because now my rotary table is lined up with the center of the spindle. I now need to get the work piece itself lined up underneath the spindle and get that tight into the vise and get the vise tight onto the rotary table. So that's going to be a little bit of manipulation there but I'll try to figure that out how I'm going to do that and I'll show you how I do that step by step here and see how it works. This is all going to be new to me too doing all this here so just bear with me and I'll, I'll uh, work this out to get this working here properly. Okay the first step would be to set this up in my vise the same way I set it up for when I went to drill the uh, center holes. Again, I got my X as a reference that will go to the top of the vise. I have my block here that will allow me to stop. Put my parallel against there nice and tight. And now get everything nice and tight this way again. The same way I had it whenever I was doing the drill press work. To do the center hole the drill press. Okay. So now we're back to where I was when I did the drill press work. The, the X, which is marks the uh, reference, is up tight against the, tight, uh, the vise here, against the stop that was here. So it's now in the same position it was when it was being drilled. And so now I can take this and put this over on the rotary table. Now the reason why I did the same setup with the same parallels and the block here and thing that I did on the drill press is so that uh, I can set every one of these individual pieces on the rotary table. I use the same setup again to make sure they all line up the same way. Okay, I think the next step now would be to put a center finder in here. I can't use my wiggler because I don't have enough room in between here. So I have to use a, a, a center finder. Uh, one of these kind. But I think what I'm going to do here is uh, get this lined up. Can you see what's going on here? I want to get this lined up inside the hole here now. Moving my vise, keeping my table tight, and getting this lined up here, and begin manipulating this a little bit back and forth here until I get it where I want it this direction here. And then I have a clamp back here that I can clamp to get it started here. Just to get my vise a little bit tight here a little bit. And then I'll put a clamp on this side. I can't put anything on this side because that's where my stop is going to go. It's always on the right hand side here. But I just want to get this now. It's lined up here so... Okay, so now I can keep on adjusting my my workpiece and my clamp back, or my uh, vise back and forth here until I get everything concentric here where it needs to be and then I can tighten everything down. Okay, now that I got it real close I can get a double check now on the machine. Take it down nice and slow. And finally using the bit itself for the last double check. Okay, looks good. Okay, let me give you a little rundown of what I'm trying to accomplish here now. I don't know if I showed you these or not yet, but these are the ball bearings that I'm going to be using. They're eight inch. They're eighth inch. Diameter ball bearings. Now, here's what I'm planning on doing. This is the top plate that I'm working on right now in my rotary table. I'm going to move my rotary table over so that I am now centered on the center line, on the hole here. 
I'm going to move my rotary table over so that I have an eighth inch uh, milling cutter that will come over a certain radius from that uh, center line and then I'll turn my, ra my, radial, my rotary table and I'll make a circular groove for the ball bearings to ride in. That will be the top flange. The bottom flange will have to be reset back in my vise and reset again and that will have three at a 120 degree angle here three ball bearings that will be seated in here that I'll use an eighth inch ball mill and I will spot drill at 120 degrees so I have a triangle here of three uh, ball bearings seated and that should give me the ability to make that uh, rotate back and forth with the ball bearings. So right now since I'm working on a top flange right now I need to do a whole rotary table circumference uh, cut around here and that's what I'm getting ready to do next. I need to go on my plans here now and see what that, that, that uh, radius is. And uh, there it is, the offset, eighth inch groove. Uh, it'll be a sixteenth of an inch deep, which is sixty-three thousandths of an inch deep. And the radius is a hundred and forty-four thousandths of an inch off of the center. And that's what I need to work on now. Okay, I think I'm going to use my x-axis. <clears throat> to bring that over that 140 thousandths. And I think I'm going to take it tight to here. Like that. Put my zero here. And then bring my table this direction, 144 thousandths. Just let me double check that here. 144 thousandths for the radius. So I'll move my x-axis now to 144 thousandths. One hundred forty four. Hundred and forty four thousandths. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I put an eighth inch drill mill in there and I'm going to penetrate that down. I'm going to touch off first and then I'm going to set my gauge here and then I'm going to penetrate down a uh, 63 thousandths and then I'll bring that back up maybe a 32 thousandths and then I'll try to see how I can go with the round with the uh, rotary table see how it acts up and then if that works good then I'll just go down the full 63 thousandths and do a, a uh, rotary table all the way around 360 degrees and then I will change that, that end mill for a ball end mill to, uh, to make the, uh, a bull nose on the bottom for the ball bearing to ride in so let me get this uh, touched off here first. Okay, now I'll touch it off. I'm going to set my gauge here. I'm going to penetrate down now. Uh, 63,000. Fifty, 
16. Now if we're down by 10,000 at a time, we'll see how that works out. Up to about 10,000 right now, <clears throat> just to see how it's going to react with the uh, turn the rotator. Hey, let's take it over to the workbench and see how ball bearings work inside. No, wait a minute. I better put the ball bearings in right now and see how it works to see if I'm going to have to do any kind of uh, more uh, milling in there. So let me get some ball bearings here. Okay, that's going to have to be wide and more. As you can see there, it's just riding right on top. But it's going to have to be... Uh, it's going to have to get a little wider for the bearing to drop down all the way. So what I can do is I can use my ball end mill now and go inside there. Uh, maybe I should do that next. Let me think this through. Okay. found out that my uh, drill end mill is a little bit thinner. It's not exactly eighth of an inch. So I put a straight two flute eighth inch uh, end mill in there and widen the slot. The drill mill is just a little bit shallower than this here. And that's why I was getting a shallow groove. So I may just have to go with a straight end mill here to do the grooves. Okay, let's see how the ball bearing works now. Okay. 
Looks like that's going to ride pretty good in there. I'll clean that out. Looks like that's going to ride okay. Let me uh, go down the full 60,000. I'm, I'm at, I'm at 50,000s right now in depth. Let me go down the full 60,000s and then see how that works. Alright. Go down our 10,000. there at the bench, clean it up and see how the ball bearings run in it. Okay, it's gonna run nice. I'll put uh, three ball bearings and here's a top piece, remember this piece here, that'll get spot drilled That'll get spot drilled three separate places, 120 degrees from each other, so that the ball bearings will fit inside here in the spot drill holes, and then it'll ride in the groove on the top flange. But let's go ahead and put that on top here just right now to see how much gap we have here. Oops, back of the ball bearing. Okay, that's going to work. That's a nice groove. The ball bearing goes around nicely. So that's going to work fine for that. Okay, I'll do the rest of the seven of these and then start working on these here. And that's coming up next. Okay, you can see right there how much the ball bearing protrudes up from the top here. About half the uh, width. So when I machine this down to about sixty thousandths, I'm going to leave myself maybe anywhere from three to five thousandths of an inch of uh, gap here if I can. And then that will run. And if it's a little bit too deep, then I can always take a little bit off this here, or take off this here, to get a little more ball bearing protrude again. But right now, I'll just go with uh, this depth here, and it's working really nice for that. Okay, now it's time to do the bottoms here. <clears throat> I'll just do the same thing again. I'll line everything up with my X mark here. Put my stop here. Sure, these nice and tight. I'm trying to work around the camera here, that's why I'm having a hard time. <clears throat> For this her bottom one here, <clears throat> what I need to do is I need to spot face every 120 degrees down to the 16th of an inch in depth. I have this locked here in my rotary table at zero. Okay, now before I do this here spot drilling <clears throat> every 120 degrees. I want to I want to turn the table about 10 degrees 
five degrees off each uh, spot hole. I don't want just one spot hole uh, at an eighth inch bit drilled down or uh, end hole drilled down, but rather I want to come down and go both directions. <clears throat> I want about a, uh, a ten degrees of uh, length of the circumference of the spot hole itself. I don't want just one little hole. I want it to be elongated a little bit, about five degrees both sides of it. So what I did here is I, I'm i starting my rotary table here at five degrees below zero here. I will plunge down my sixteenth of an inch, then I'll turn my rotary table five degrees past zero, and then I will go to the next setting, which would be 120 degrees, and then I'll go to 115 degrees to 125 degrees, and then I'll do the same thing 235 to 45, and just keep on going that way there. And that way I'll have a little bit of a groove instead of just a spot hole. I'll have a groove for the ball bearing to just ride in about 10 degrees of circumference. Start throwing my table about 10 degrees. Right there at zero. And five degrees. Now, because of that, I can drop a ball bearing in there. And I have a little bit of wiggle room both directions of it. It can move back and forth this way here in a small groove, this way here. It's not just the width of the ball bearing itself now it has a little bit of play back and forth this way and that's what I want about 10 degrees 5 degrees off each center line okay now I'll go ahead and I'll turn it to 120 and I'll come back 5 degrees off of that and then do the same thing again and then do the same thing at 240 and then I should have the three spot drills for the ball bearings for the bottom part of this here caster setup okay I'll turn to 120 now there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Get rid of the backlash. 110 and 115. That's what I want, 115. Lock it. And we'll do the next one now. Now, since I'm turning my rotary table backwards in the number of degrees, I'm actually at 2. 55 coming down to 240. I'm actually going 240 then 120 because I'm going in a counterclockwise direction so that my bit is uh, turning uh, this way against the outside, climb milling on the inside here. But anyway, I'm at uh, 255, then I'll mill around here to 240, then back down to 235, and that would give me my 10 degree on the 240 or the 120 degrees off of this one here. Okay, so you can see how that works out, and I'll do the same thing one more time over here, another 120 degrees, and then uh, we'll check and see how that works with the top plate and the ball bearings. All ready? Let's see what we got here now. Okay, let's take it over and let's take a look and see how that works with the ball bearings here. focus here I'm working at. There we go. One ball bearing. Two. Three ball bearings. Take a top 
Can you see what I'm doing? I'm right here. Okay. Now I'll take a uh, top plate that has the full groove in there and a 440 screw. Got a long one here. And the 440 screw will eventually get uh, will eventually get uh, it'll get uh, Loctited into the bottom later on. Okay, let me just zoom down here a bit so we can get clearer here. Alright, so now the screw will be locked tight into the bottom flange, and then that will be the rotation part. Just loosen up a little bit. Oops, and there we go. It rotates. Okay, now if you're looking down side there, you can see how the bearings are set up in there. And depending on how tight I tighten the screw, <clears throat> but you can see the bearings down the side, I believe. They're riding along inside the groove and they're staying in the uh, in their spots. Okay, that's going to work really good. Okay, now I noticed that on the uh, on an actual picture of a caster here, the top plate is actually uh, where the flange is at is thinner and it allows the area where the ball bearings are at to be raised like a raised area here <clears throat> and uh, that's what I think I'm going to do with my, with my pieces to also I'm going to try to raise this area here and that would be with these here blanks here right now I have it down to this point right here but it looks like what I can do is I can machine the corners down a little bit lower now so that that would give the the groove uh, a raised look so that when you look at from this profile here the ball bearing groove would have that raised look like shown over here and I'll probably do the same for the bottom also I'll probably do some sort of a uh, shaping that would make that stand out more also but right now the main thing is the top part right here and that's the part that I want to start working on getting that raised area here uh, machined out Okay, what I'm looking at here is this reveal inside here like this. That's about 60, 60 some thou, 70 some thou, that area. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use this reveal from here to here and go all the way around. And the height of this is about 160 thou. I'm going to take this down 100 thou, all around 100 thousands, and have about a 60 thou, maybe a sixteenth of an inch reveal of a plate left over in thickness and this would raise this about a hundred thousandths of an inch off of the plate here so that's what I'm going to do with this here now at the mill. Okay now here's where I'm at with this here this here is about a hundred and sixty thousandths and I need to take down a hundred thousandths off the top of this here where the groove is at to make that there ball bearing flange uh, stick up. <clears throat> what I need to do though is I need to put this in my vise and I need to clamp it at about a sixteenth of an inch and then come down and just barely touch onto the clamp onto my uh, vise. I want to stay above the vise about four thousandths or so, thickness of a piece of paper. But my uh, my parallels that I have, my vise jaw is one inch in height. My parallels I have one set that goes to one inch and the next one down to seven eighth and I have the small set I have here goes down to seven eighth of an inch. That gives me an eighth of an inch from the top of the parallel to the top of the vise. I need a sixteenth of an inch from the top of the vise down. So I can't use any kind of parallel for that. <clears throat> I'm going to have to uh, make a small parallel uh, just, just a small little block, except to just uh, cut a small block that will put me a one sixteenth of an inch below the, the top of my vise and then I should be able to use that to uh, locate this for height wise and that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, I have my vise and everything located back underneath the spindle again I put the uh, workpiece back in here again and I got everything located so my vise is now in position uh, the rotary table is back in position. Everything's in position now for this to be uh, machined on my rotary table here. 
but here's where I'm talking about the height issue. I need to bring this here up another, well, to have, to have about a sixteenth of an inch of a flange below here, below the top of the vise. Here's my plan for the plan I'm doing. I don't want to take the rotary table off my milling machine to do any kind of milling to mill any kind of blocks or anything to get to the to height. So what I'll do is I'll go on my lathe and I will I will machine a piece of uh, to height, a piece of round stock uh, thinner than this, so I can use I can still I still want to clamp onto the block here, but I'll just use I'll just take a piece of round stock to use that for a, for a height gauge here, and I'll machine that exactly to one inch. Uh, minus a sixteenth, about fifteen sixteenths, roughly in that area there, about fifteen sixteenths, maybe give it just a little bit more one way or another so I don't touch my vise with the milling with the milling cutter. Then what I will do is I'll also drill and thread that for a 440 screw. And then I will take this and I will locate that on that pin. I will screw it down tight and then I will drop it down onto the bottom of the vise here. For the location of the height, and then I'll bring the edge of the workpiece again, keeping the X reference to the back here. Bring the front edge here until it's flush to the face of this right here. Or no, better yet, since I have since I've been drilling off this side here and locating off this side, I'll have to locate here back this way. So what I'll do is I will drop it down, uh, for locating for the height here with that pin. And then I will take my two locating surfaces that I've been using for all throughout this whole procedure, which is this right side here where the X is at, and I will locate off the back side of this, uh, flush with this, and then I will set my vise to uh, fit that, and then I'll be able to do all the machining, and I'll have everything located where it needs to be. You'll see what I'm talking about when I get it done here.
Okay, let's put on the mill and see how it works. Referenced off this back edge here, referenced off of here, and I have my height adjusted now to where I need to go to now. I just realized that's not going to work because I'd have to move my vise way down here and I wouldn't have any way to, uh, to clamp my vise. So I had to go back to the original thing, put my block here, put that parallel here, and moving this over inside the vise here, off center of the vise like I did before. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I was trying to get away to the other side of the vise here because I have a big hole in the center of the vise here and I wasn't sure if that there, uh, if the height gauge there is going to go inside there or not. I'll have to check and see if that will clear that, but if it doesn't then I'll have to just set it over until I get it close enough where I don't have to move my vise so far. So we'll see. Okay, I've marked the, uh, I marked where my reference marks are at. My X is up in the right hand corner here. I've been setting my vise on the back side like this all the time. I just realized I can set it in the front as long as I have my reference, one of the references against the back side here and the other reference against the uh, front here. So it doesn't really matter if I put it this way or this way as long as I have one of the references tight against the back side here. So that's what I'll do. I'll put this inside on the side here now and I won't have to move my vice as far now and I should be able to uh, be more convenient for me to machine this way. And then I'll just tighten it here, and I'll have my height, and I'll have it uh, located this way and that way, because both references are on both reference surfaces, and that'll work real well. Okay, just like that, there's the height, there's the uh, locator for the height. Again, like I said, the reference surface is here and across the front, and uh, now you can see how much it protrudes up the top there so now I can do the milling and clear the vise and come down about a sixteenth of an inch and still clear the vise and have good support because I'm clamping right down the block itself. What I need to do now is take the screw out of here and move the vise now in position to make it uh, underneath the spindle here and that's what I'm going to do here next. Time. So I'm going to make myself a good camera mount that I can put this camera in convenient places where I can actually do the work and let you swatch in at the same time. Right now I'm trying to position the camera and work around it and so I'll see if I get a good view here. Here's what I'm talking about and doing now. I have the uh, drill bit put back in here that I use for the clearance hole for the for this top flange. I'm going to loosen my vise now because I know the rotary table is back in position to be on center. I know that because I've moved it. What I'll do now is I'll just move my vise until I get my vise lined up even with the uh, drill bit here and then I can tighten the vise down. I remember I have that there bar underneath there so I can't get too far down right there. Looks that should be it right there. And now I'll have to uh, readjust this to get the vise tight. Okay, I got myself clamped down here nice and tight now. I moved my vise over and just move this up a little bit here. And you can see, it's clearly see that it's uh, it's back on center, and it is on center. I have the vise lined up now, using that drill bit. So it is on center now. So what I can do now is move my rotary table over to the outside of the block, and then I can use that as a gauge to know how much I'm going to be taking off around the whole perimeter now to bring this down to bring that flange down and that will cause the ball bearing race area to be raised off the surface to give it that look that we were looking at before. Okay, here we go. Okay, keeping the uh, Y axis locked, I'll, I'll loosen the X axis 
and I'll start advancing the table on the x-axis until my milling cutter is touching the edge of the workpiece on the reference edge here. I'm using the reference edge again and I'll just move this until I'm touching right right there and I'll lock my x-axis take it up here and I'll now rotate this to get some and I'll come down, I'll touch off now and then I'll get my depth cut Touching right there. I'm going to adjust that for about sixty thousand. Okay, I'm not. I'm not touching my voice, which is a good thing. I set my depth. I come back up. And drop it 10 thousandths now for test cut. Thirty thousand now. I'll have to move the X axis a little more to touch off when they look closer, but I'll just focus here and move it right now. Okay, so you can see how strong this thing is. That screw out there. I'm gonna check and see how it works. Okay, there it is. That's what it looks like. We went from this. We went from this being square to this being rounded on the bottom. Looks nice. Okay, I got to do the rest of them now that way, and then we'll start working on the bottom for the uh, wheel assembly. That'll be next after this. I like that. So that's a nice. Uh, it's a nice uh, addition to it, nice, looks nice, okay.